Hey guys, Yulia here. So today I want to talk about rhododendron pruning and there are a number of reasons why you would want to prune your rhododendron. Uh, let's say you moved in a new house and you have this overgrown hedge of rhododendrons or your own rhododendrons that you planted years ago are getting a little out of control and uh, you just want to size control them. So um, these rhododendrons right here behind me, they were here before we moved in this house 17 years ago. So obviously I estimate them at maybe 25 years old and they are huge and I love them. And that's another point when you are planting a new rhododendron, make sure you look at that size um, on the label, on the tag, because they do get rather large and you want to put them in the space where they can uh, grow to their full potential and be these gorgeous plants that you want them to be. But if let's say they are out of control, you're ready to like do away with them, there are ways to size control them and to prune them. So I will show you today on this specimen right behind me. Uh, there's another one right here. It's kind of difficult to show on this plant, so I'm going to show you on this one. Um, you can chop down the entire rhododendron down to about five, uh, like one foot off the ground. And believe it or not, sometimes they recover. I am not going to make a promise that they will, but I have seen it done and they are resilient plants and they you know, will recover, but I do not guarantee that. So I would say start with kind of baby steps that I will show you and um, maybe make an experiment with one plant that maybe you don't particularly care for, chop it down all the way to the ground and see if it will regrow. All right, guys, let's examine this plant. So you can see all of the new growth right here. So the time to prune your rhododendron, if you want any blooms next year, is like the second after it's done blooming. So you can see these flowers started fading two days ago. So this right now is the best time to prune. You're already starting to see new growth here. So you see what's gonna happen next year. This is going to be my new growth and right there. So it's way too tall. Um, out of our kitchen window, it's actually blocking the view and it's also blocking the view of my beautiful hydrangea petillaris, uh, or also known as climbing hydrangea. So what I'm trying to do is take it down up to here. And I know that seems like a lot, but that's about a third of a plant and you never cut like more than a third of a plant unless you want to do like a drastic, drastic pruning. So let's look at the base of the plant. And again, examination is very important in gardening. You kind of want to look at things first before you take up a saw or pruners or loppers. So you see that new growth right there at the base of the plant. We want that new growth to get more light. So once we prune this plant down, that new growth will get more light and the plant will become bushier and has more flowers. So I'm going to take up my pruning implements and show you how to do this. All right, guys. So I think I found a way to explain how and where to prune your plant. So think of a rhododendron growth is like um, years growth. So this is this year's growth right here. And you can see it's nice and fresh right over here. And then from here to here, it's from here to here is the last year's growth. And from here to here is the previous year's growth and so on and so forth. So we're kind of going back in time when we're pruning our rhod rhododendron. So you're going like five years back in time and you're kind of counting them off. So to size control this, I'm going to cut it back to two years ago. And what you're looking for, I'm gonna cut it first and I'm gonna close up to the lateral growth. There 
there we go. And um, I'm just using regular pruners. I love these ones. Um, these are Fiskars. So, boom, done. So let me just close up. I'll show you the lateral growth I'm talking about. So here they are. These are the lateral buds that you're looking for. And they will all wake up once you make that cut and create a stronger new growth rather than more like a scraggly lawn ones like that. I hope that makes sense. All right, guys, so the next, I'm going to cut this large branch right here to about five years ago. And this is the only time you can go back in time. Oh boy, I wish I could go back in time in real life, but you can't. You can only do it when you're cutting your shrubs. So anyway, what you're looking for is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, sorry, is a collection of branches right here. And this is where I'm going to cut um, it back to. So at that collection of branches, you also have lateral buds that will develop in lateral growth. Now, the older the wood is, the longer it takes for the lateral buds to break out. And don't be alarmed if, you, if it's like been a couple of weeks and you still don't see any growth. It's just taking much longer because the wood is thicker. So it takes much longer for the growth to break out of it. So for this part, I'm going to be using these loppers. And I love these loppers. They're so easy to use. They cut through thick branches like butter. And this is very simple. So you just go as close to the other branches as you can and cut it down. That's it. So I cut the largest branch and I think I'm just going to do a little cleanup on the side. So what I accomplished with cutting that branch, first of all, I took the plant down to manageable size. I can see my hydrangea, which is awesome. And also I let a lot of light to the middle of the plant. So those, all of that new growth can now grow and create new strong branches. So I think um, this is pretty much it. This was about a third of a plant that I cut. And normally on uh, all of the shrubs, the general rule is not to cut more than a third of a plant. Uh, otherwise it will be really stressed out. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna work a little bit more on this plant and I'll show you the result. All right guys, so I think I'm done. And um, one tip when you're pruning rhododendron or any other shrub to kind of step back and to look at it, kind of like a painting, to see if maybe you're pruning it too much, maybe it's a little bit misshapen. So the idea is for your shrub or rhododendron that you're pruning is not to become mutilated in the process. So kind of like step back, look at it, and uh, if you think you're getting a little bit too aggressive, just leave it alone. So the next step is to fertilize your rhododendron, and I fertilize mine right at this time of the pruning or right after they bloom, so they can set beautiful blooms for the next year, and I use Hollytone. Hollytone is my absolute favorite uh, fertilizer for rhododendrons, azaleas, blueberries, and other acid-loving plants. So uh, let me do that now. All right, so this is a bag that I haven't even started yet. Be careful, bud. What are you doing? <laughs> You're just being curious. Hi, buddy. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. You're so sweet. So, Hollytone is 
so good. I've been buying these big bags because it is so helpful for my plants. So I'm using about, uh, this is about a cup and a half. And I'm going to put it around the drip line of a plant. And then a little bit more. Because it, it is a large plant. So I want it to get as much nutrients as possible. And then kind of take my gloves later and work it into the soil like so. And then I'm actually going to mulch it on top. And this is it. All right, guys, so this is it. Um, if you found this video informational, you can share it with your friends who love to garden and have questions on how to do it. As per usual, if you have any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time. Bye. One more thing, guys, before I go, I just wanted to show you these beautiful rhododendrons that my mom and I planted about 15 years ago. Look at this. Aren't they just beautiful? This is my favorite color combination, too. The white with the purple. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Bye.